talking. Let's not, uh, no more questions about the minor. Let's focus now on solving equations, exponential equations. I'd like to start off with you having a go at solving this equation graphically. Take it out on your calculator, have a go at that now. I should come around <coughs> and have a look. Okay, so to solve an equation graphically, what we want to do is you want to graph the left-hand side, which is this. You want to graph the right-hand side, which is this. And then find the intersection. So pulling up my graphing calculator, just start with a nice new fresh page. I'm going to add a graph page. I want 275 times, so e is found here, e to the x. We want the e to the x function, oops, I missed off the 6. We want the e to the x function, 0.06x. We get the graph. We also want to put in the left, the right hand side, which is 1,000. So we know that the y value is a thousand, which is why we don't see anything, because this is starting at just less than seven. So double click on this one, make it 1,200. Double click over here on this one, let's make it go a little bit higher than 10, we can see it getting close, the two graphs cross there. So to find the answer to the equation, we need to analyze the graph, find the intersection, move this across, and then click here. Just get that value there. 21.5. So, if we're solving this equation system, we need to show a method. So our method is to show the graph that we have drawn, like this. We have y is equal to 275 times e to the 0.06x. We have y equals 1,000. We have our intersection at 21.5 comma 1,000. So your method points for this type of question would be successfully draw this graph. The graph should look like this. You shouldn't have your scale so, so wide on the x-axis compared to the uh, y-axis that you can't actually see where the intersection is occurring. Coming around looking at your screen, some of you just found it by zooming out. You need to get a little bit better at adjusting the uh, minimum and maximum x and y values. I showed you there on the calculator one way is just to double click on the, these parts here. Another good way is to press menu, graph, and sorry, window, window settings. So then we could have the, the x minimum at zero, and you can just type them in, make this one zero and we get the graph looking like this. So this implies, so this in, what is that? This implies that x is equal to 21.5. Any questions on that one? So on the major, if we use the graph, you don't really have to like, draw the graph. If, you draw, if you're solving an equation graphically, you should draw the graph to show you how to solve it graphically. Then if you use that, we want to draw a graph. If, if the question is requiring you to do it graphically, then mm -hmm. you have to draw. So if you had the key, you know, this would solve graphically, you would have to do this because any solve is graphically. So when you said scale, what do you mean by scale like the graph? Like if you draw it, we just the, the, the scale on the axis. The scale on the axis. Yeah, like how do you want it specifically? Is it just the I want it to so that you can see the key features of the graph. There is no specific value, it will depend on the numbers and the type of graph given. But you should adjust it so you see the key features of the graph, the shape. What we're really looking for in this type of a graphical solution is that we're well, making sure that there's not two solutions. If you get like E in the demonstration, how do you make that into like a branch or a decimal on the back? Control enter. Oh no, that one. Right. Um, I, I know what you're talking about. So if we're here, um, let me say, so my document settings are. 
If I put my document settings into flow two, I'll try and get. It. I'll try and get it. So n solving this one, we would n solve it like this: two seven five times e to the point zero six x is equal to a thousand comma x. It's not what I want. <laughs> um, The, okay. So let's say we have a number like this and we, we just see it as e. You need to really understand that that is 1 times 10 to the 4. You need to learn to read these numbers. So if it, it, when, you, when you're doing a graphical solution like this one, we can see 1e e plus 3. That means we have 1 times 10 to the 3. One times a thousand is a thousand. If this is plus, uh, if this is minus twenty-eight or something, it, it's times ten. Yeah, so it's ten to the minus. But typically, with the calculator, when you're doing graphical solutions on this calculator, you might get a really large negative number here because that is basically zero. It's giving you zero. So one times ten to the minus nineteen. Typically, it isn't 10 to the minus 19, it's actually zero, but the, cal the way the calculator has a numerical algorithm to find the answer, it runs out of space and it, it gives you an answer like that. So get used to rejecting that answer and say, oh, that's zero. Um, you can force it, so we've got this here, um, and it's giving, I've set, it's in my document settings that's causing this to come out looking like that, because get used to moving in your document settings by pressing document seven, Two. I've got it in flow two, so you can't represent um, ten thousand with two significant digits that easily on the calculator. So stick it back into flow, press enter, and it might give you the whole answer. It might not. You have to get used to using both. So there's our answer. Let's have a go at doing this one algebraically now. So we've got two seven five times e to the 0.06x is equal to 1,000. Let's start off. So your basic strategy for this type of an equation, exponential equation, your basic strategy is rearranged into the form where you get a to the x is equal to p. Aim for this form. Rearrange, simplify until you get to this form. And then we will take logs of both sides. So this equation is solved by taking logs of both sides. Um, so what we need to do first is to aim for that first. We get e to the 0.06x is equal to 1000 over 275. So simplify this fraction. Obviously, both of these numbers are divisible by 25. There are four 25s in 100. 8 in 200, so 11 in 275, and this one's 40. We get to this point. Oh, sir? Yep. Is E an actual number? Yes, 2.71, it's like pi. Yeah. Yep. So now we've got it into this format. Let me rewrite it. 0.06x is equal to 40 over 11. We're into the form ax, a to the x equals b. So at that point, take logarithms of both sides. You can take logarithms in any base of both sides, but for instance, in this one, I'm definitely going to be using natural logarithms. So if I take logarithms of both sides, I get... e to the 0.06x and 40 over 11. So when you take logs of both sides, you apply to each, the left-hand side goes inside the logarithm, the right-hand side goes inside the logarithm, like when you square root both sides. In fact, when, when you do any function to both sides, even multiplication, you're timesing three times the bracket around, and then you're using the distributive property, which makes it seem like you're just multiplying every term. But you can never apply it to every term. You apply it to the whole side of the equation. Can you do natural log of 40 over natural log of 11? 
that would not work, obviously. It would have to be the natural log of 40 minus the natural log of 11. The quotient property of log of All right, so we can simplify this. How can we simplify it? How can we simplify it? Then? Uh, logarithm of like e sub the fifth natural logarithm is like e. So uh, what do you need to square root e by to get e zero point zero six? So the square root of by three point zero six x. No, not what I'm looking for. Um, natural logarithm is log base e, so that cancels out with the e, so it's just zero. Not yet, it doesn't. Oh. Next. The natural log of e to the power of zero point zero six x becomes zero point zero six x. Why? Because you're getting the log base e of e to the power of. What we need to use first is the power property of logarithms. So if we apply the power property of logarithms on the left-hand side, how will this simplify? Sir? So then it becomes 0 0.06x times natural log of e. And natural log of e Let's just leave it in that point. How can we simplify the right-hand side using the quotient property of logarithms? Um, the quotient property would be uh, the natural log of 40 minus the natural log of 11. ln 40 minus ln 11. How can we simplify ln e? 1. It is imperative that you memorize these basic ideas. ln of e is equal to 1. What is ln of 1 equal to? E to the 1. E to the 1. What is it? The log in any base of the base is 1. Why don't you write this one down? The log in any base of the base equals 1. The log of any base, the log in any base, of the base equals 1. So, log base x of x equals 1. Log base x of 1 equals 0. Memorize these two. Power property of logarithms? Like, oh, the power property is of yeah, the So we have e. x is equal to ln 40 minus ln 11 over 0 0.06. Jonathan, this is the exact answer to the question. This is an exact answer to the question. This is in simplest possible form and would be the exact answer. Stick it into your calculator next. What do we get? Type it into your calculator. So so you so in the minor, we're not going to have calculators, so your answers will look like this. Your answers will look like this. Okay, so on your calculator, on your calculator, we need the quotient. To find the logarithm, press control and then here, it's above e to the x. This is where we find logarithm, natural logarithms. We want log 40 minus log 11 over 0 0.06. Notice we get 21.5 as we did in the previous question. We we're going to write this one as 21.516.
Okay, can I, on this question, and I think on your, on your homework, you're working with the IX cells to save yourself some time and work on rounding to three decimal places, or if you're only seeing 21.5 on your calculator right now, it's to do with your settings on your calculator. So document 7.2 is really useful. I've got, I'm in float at the moment. A lot of you are often in float three. This is my normal setting, so you'll get something looking like this. Um, for this question, if it's asking for to the nearest thousandth in an IXL, then put it in fix three, and it will always give you the exact answer IXL is looking for. And that'll just save yourself some time. Get used to using your calculator. That's why it's essential you bring it to every class. Uh, float. So in, when you do this one, document settings, so fix is decimal places, float is significant figures. So my normal setting is float three. But today I'm going to use fix three. Dimitri asked the question. I would accept also the answer in simplest possible form as this one. I consider both of these two to be the simplest possible form. So what I do in that one is I ask for an exact value. Uh, if I'm not asking for an exact value, I just send solve it. So, like, if you had an exam question, we should, shouldn't you just use those for it working and then why not to use those three <laughs> um, No, when you're doing your working, Jonathan, when you do, this is a good question. On a, que on a question, let's say it's a multi part question, if you make a calculation earlier in the, on your calculator, you write down on your paper three signatures. But when you use that calculation in subsequent calculations, you use all of the significant things, all of the, the exact values. So you should always carry exact values forward through your working. You can write down three significant figures, but you must always carry exact values forward. Have a go at this one for yourselves. Okay, so for this one, We've got the question 5x minus 4 equals 7. So the first thing to do is to rewrite this as 5 to the x equals 11. At this point, we can choose to use two approaches. We can just rewrite this and say that x is equal to log base 5 of 11. And this is the exact answer. This is one of the exact answers I would consider acceptable when I ask for given exact answer in simplest possible form. I will accept this one. If the question says give an exact answer in simplest possible form in common logarithms, then you would need to use the other approach. So here at this point, you would take logs of both sides like this. You then use the power property of logarithms to bring this one forward. And then the answer is this, log 11 over log 5. So both of these two I would consider to be, um, I would consider to be uh, simplest possible form. I don't think either of these two are simpler than the all right, so here I'm in base 5, so we can use the change of base at this particular point to rewrite this as log base 10 of 11 over log base uh, 10 of 5. In fact, we could change it to ln 11, ln 5. So, anything, so... All of these are the correct answer to this question in simplest possible form. 
Um, so in the test, you'll specify whether you could just be the simplest possible form. I, I'll form. just go. Typically, I'll go for the simplest possible form. And any of these would be good. Any of these would be good. And if it's common logarithm, which one would you add? If it's common logarithm, I will accept this one and this one. So, um, so at that one, then, as long as you open all five, does that equal to log 11 minus log five? Or no. That's it's not. It's log 11. That, yeah, that's a common, that's one of the common things that people. So, Jonathan, it's a really good question. There's a really common misconception in students new to this topic that you will sometimes think and make is that is this one this or is it this and it is not. So this expression cannot be simplified. You saw on the last page I simplified this expression to that. They look very similar, and you start to get a little bit confused when you're new to this topic. I've spent 30 years with people. How do I, can I simplify that one into a single logarithm? The answer is no. It just doesn't do it. Well, you can get into a single logarithm like that. You could write it backwards through the change of base form and the single logarithm is the only way of doing it. But it's a very common, oh, can I, isn't that something I can simplify? Spent 30 years watching new, people new to this go through that phase. Okay. Have a go at these two. All right, so we want to start off here firstly. By rearranging, we get 2e to the x minus 1 is equal to 75. Divide through by 2, we get e to the x minus 1 is equal to 37.5. Take natural logarithms of both sides, and we get x minus 1. You need a bracket around that if we're going to multiply by ln e. So then we can simplify, L and E cancels, L and E becomes 1, remember this, remember this. So X is equal to 1 plus L and 37.5. I'm writing the 1 plus instead of 37.5 plus 1. It's easier for me to avoid the ambiguity of whether the plus 1 is inside the logarithm or not. Um, do I need to write x minus 1 in parentheses times 11e, e, or can I just write x minus 1? Because 11e e always cancels. Or anything long time to time. You don't need to write it. I'm writing it repeatedly as I drill it into you. But I would expect, I would be quite happy for you to go from, from this to this to this. At, at this level of mathematics, jumping those little steps is perfectly fine. Um, I, I think if you're dividing 75 by 2, it might be quicker to go for it. Yeah. Um, I would probably R and R with it. Because what, she, what she's asking is, is simplest possible form 1 plus um, ln 75 over 2. I probably would accept that. It depends on my day. If I was upset in the morning, then no. Um, and let's say it wasn't divided by 2, let's divide by 13. Could we write this? Sorry. Could we write this? If it was divided by 13, I would not divide it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So totally. should, should it's I... only because it was divided by if it's divided by 2 or 4 or 5, I might look for a, you know, and otherwise no. Let's say it's like a hard number to divide. Definitely don't. Yeah, don't divide, but should I do uh, ln of 75 over 13 or ln of 75 minus ln? I've said previously both of those are acceptable. Oh, yeah. Could we write this as a single logarithm? No, no, no. Oh, yeah, so we look at it in a single Yeah, it is a single logarithm. No, we've got two, we've got an expression, one plus a logarithm. Yeah, one is equal to the one inside the three. How? Oh, you can the line and Alan's given us a good. So, Alan says we can write it like this. 
Oh, I'll switch back to the 37.5. And then he said... Do we need to... No, we don't. This is not necessary. Unless the question said write in this form, right, as a single logarithm or something. Then. It could. I've seen questions that look like this. Because it's, it's, you're just playing with the uh, properties of logarithms. All right, last question. 3x is equal to log base 6 of 12 x is equal to log base 6 of 12 over 3. That's as simple as it would go. That's what I have to say. I do all right, so yeah. Oh, you can see, right? Yeah. 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 I would consider both. Oh, sorry, let me. I've written it in the wrong place. If your three's on top, it's wrong. These two, these two here are simple as possible. These two are simple as possible. Okay, have a read of this question. Okay, I'm going to go through this one as an example. I'm going to go through this one as an example. He goes at the back. All right. Going through this one as an example, we've got 250 deposited in account, pays 4.5% compounded quarterly. The equation A blah blah equals gives the amount A in the account after N quarters for an initial investment P that earns interest at a rate R. Solve for N to find out how long it takes for the account to contain at least 500. So we need this account, which is going to be 250 times 1 plus, we've got to have this one as a percent, sorry, 4.5% over 4, so the n has to be greater than 500. So that's, I can divide by 250 on both sides, I'm going to get 1 plus 0 0.045 over 4, to the n is greater than 2. I'm going to divide 0 0.45 by n and add it to that. Zero point zero four five divided by 2 plus 1. That's going to give me 1.01 1 125. I guess. All right, so at this point, we take logs of both sides, we get n. Okay, you want to follow me through at this point. Alan, you want to follow me through at this point. I'm going to say important, subtle things. So here, I've got my inequality. I'm going to take logs of both sides of the inequality. I get log 1.01125 is greater than 
log of 2. At this point, I'm going to divide by log of 1.0125. Is that positive or negative? Um, it's possible, it's just a fraction. Yeah, it's, no, it's, 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 it's a fraction because one Where do logs turn from not negative to positive? That's at one. one. At one. So if you're taking the logarithm of a number that you know to be bigger than one, you don't change the, um, when you multiply or divide by it, you don't change the direction of the inequality. But if you are multiplying or dividing by a logarithm of a number that is less than 1, you're multiplying or dividing by a negative number. So the logarithm of point 0.1 is negative. You must change the direction of the inequality. If you are multiplying or dividing by the inequality of the logarithm of x, you must interpret it both ways and find out what x is and then come back to the of nine. Avoid it where possible. I won't give you a question that forces you to do that. So remember, if you're multiplying or dividing an inequality by the log of x, you could be dividing or multiplying by positive or negative. So think it through. Typically, what I do with that is I turn it into an equation, multiply, solve it as an equation, and then interpret from the context which way the which direction of the inequality should go. Like in this case, we know that the number of years is going to be bigger than the answer we get, or the number of quarters. All right, so we get n is greater or equal to log base 2 of all over log 1.01125. This we can put into the calculator. We need log I'm just going to use ln, it'll be easier, quicker. Wait, how can you use ln if it's for log? That's log in any base, log in any base. I'll show you. So Jonathan asked me a question. He's like, you've switched to natural logarithms. Why did you do that? Mostly because I know how to operate my calculator and I'm lazy. Um, and if I try and do log in base 10 on this calculator, it makes me type more. So if I do log in base 10, I've got to type in the base on this calculator. But how does it work if it's the log base 10? Change the basis. It's a ratio. It's a basic ratio. So I answered the question on the page there by log in any base. Um, I, I'm not actually. It's one of the ambiguities we're going to be getting between interpreting L O G as being common logs. It's much better. I, I like the, the, the way that I sort of learned that common logs are L G. L O G means undetermined base or any base. And L N means natural logarithms. I, I like that better. Uh, but it's not recognized in international. So I can actually change the base to any base on this one. I'm gonna get the same answer out. So let's put Let's have pi as the base. Logs in base pi. We're still going to get the same answer. It doesn't matter. It's a ratio between these two. So we need it to be bigger than that. So that's going to be 62. I would normally give it to you. It's not on the formula book, but I would provide it at, at this point. Have a go at this question for yourself. All right, so when we do these ones, we've got the general formula that the future value equals the present value times one plus the percentage rate over um, 100 times the number of quarters, number of quarters times the years. This is the standard, this is the standard formula. I can adapt that one to this one, and we want it to triple, so we want 3 times 250 equals 250 plus 1 
oh, with 0 0.045 over 4 to the n, where n is the number of orders. This is the equation we're using. But divide both sides by the initial amount. I didn't even need the initial amount. I'll just get three, three times as much. And this one we saw last time simplified to 1.0112501125. So then we can take logs of both sides. Um, I'm going to get n equals ln3 over ln 1.01125. And this is the exact answer. We need it to be greater than this. So if you put this into your calculator, and we get ln3 over ln 1.01125. We're going to get the value 98.2, so we need n is greater than 93. All right, that's it for us today. And it's good as Oops, oops, sorry, sorry. I ran out of Oh, yeah, I misread it. <laughs> okay, sorry, then 98.